Hello guys, welcome to Juco tutorial. In today's project, we're going to talk about building a clock-in system. We can see this kind of program pretty often. Imagine if you own a company or a store, you may hire employees. This program helps you to check if your employees start working on time or he, she is absent. It's actually called a punch clock like this, which we can see in plenty of companies using it nowadays. In our case, we're just performing exact same function as punch clock did, using a laptop with our Python program running on. And first thing is to make a plan for this program structure. First, we need a function which lets users input their names when they arrive working place. And second, we need to record down name and time after they complete input. Okay, so uh, we also need to record it into a file. And while the program reruns and the next employee input their name, we need to record down so on and so forth, the second and third, etc. And there are also more functions to be added and we will learn them in the future episodes. So let's uh, first work on these two core functions, which is input and output first. Before we begin, let me have a little pause right here. The best approach I think for learning is hands-on practice. So it's strongly recommend for you that you can also coding along this tutorial. If you're already familiar with some basics for Python, I also recommend that try complete this program by yourself first, based on the structure we introduced previously. Then we can see the difference between each other. And I believe there is no absolute answer about whether a program is good or bad. It's always good to absorb a diversity of approach. So here we go. We assume you prepared your environment already, which means you have already downloaded and installed both Python and VS Code. If not, please check out tutorials on the web. They are all free to use. Now, as how we start usual, we open VS Code and we select a folder. You can choose a exist folder or create a new one. So for my case, I will create a new one in uh, this place. We call it a uh, clock-in a directory name. Select it. And then we need to create a file here. Remember to add a .py at the end. I'll call it clock in .py. Okay. As we mentioned, the first function we want to is let users input their names. So here, I'm going to use the input function. Please enter your name. So after user input, the input function will fetch the user's input as a string. So we will store this user's input into a variable. Let's call it employee name. Now, uh, for this line, we have uh, complete the first function. And then the second function is we need to record down the name and time. It's more tricky than the first function. And we have small, two small tags here. First, we need to get the current time. And second, we need to store the name and time all together into somewhere. So let's do the first one, the uh, get current time. From date time, import date time. 
will import a built-in module called DateTime, which is a very popular module for dealing with date and time. What does the import line, this line means? It's simply adding an external module into your program. In brief, a module is a set of programs written by other programmers, which uh, we can use their code to save our time and efforts by importing them. Or else you might need to write over thousands of lines of codes for you, by yourself. So um, for this uh, the topic about module, we will dig into it more in future videos. So we import this module and we make use of it by using this function called datetime.nl. And it will get the uh, current time when it executes this line. So uh, we, while we get the date and time, we store them into another variable. Let's call it clock in time. Now we have the name and time. We need to store it in somewhere. And let's store it inside the text file, txt file. Now, let's open. That creates a TXT called. We need a file name here. Let's call it clockinrecord.txt. So, a small tip that the variable name and the file name is all you can decide yourself. And it's better to give it intuitively so other programmers or yourself in the when you uh, take a while and go back to see your code, you will not get confused. OK, we need to open it and we need to append it. That means we need to add content to it. So we give an append function here, which is uh, the mode what you want to deal with the file. We have uh, three modes, uh, the write mode, append mode, and read mode. So append mode means that you can uh, add your content to the file without rewriting it from the beginning. So you can accumulate your content every time you run a program. And then we need to write something inside. So we give a, we have a file here, so we can execute the write function after this file, right? Okay, let's give a F string here, which we can uh, send some variable inside this string. Now the first variable is employee name and give a tab here. And the second variable is clock in time. And then we need a new line after we uh, send the output, send the log at first. And then the second and third employee will uh, have a new new line for their logs. OK, so and at last, let's not be that robotic. We can print a warm welcome after the clocking process is finished. So we print a welcome to office. employee name. So it, it will say, uh, I'm Andrew, it will say, welcome to office, Andrew. Yeah. And we say, have a great day. Okay, let's run it, see if it works. Okay, it says, welcome to office, Andrew, have a great day. So this print function works. And here you can see it generates a clocking record.txt. Let's check a look. Okay, we can see now Andrew, uh, employee name is here, and the year and the date and time, hour, minute, second, and even the smaller 
units are record into this notepad. So let's try again to assume another employee has came called uh, Abby. Okay, let's see if Abby's log is inside. Okay, now we have uh, make this program success. So it works and we only use like uh, six lines of code. So I think Python is very uh, is simple. The sim simplicity is Python's feature. Yeah, so I like it. Yeah. So, um, but this is just the beginning. And um, we have additional fun features for us to challenge in the future. And first one is we need to check if the name is exactly inside the employee name list. So we can prevent from strangers to clock in. And also it's better to manage your uh, employees' attendance. And second, you might experience the uh, clock in out multiple times under some circumstances. So we need to handle that scenario. And third, we can set up a working hour and let program help checking whether employees are late or left early when uh, the clock in and clock out, clock out time is not in the expected interval. And the fourth, how about a monthly attendance summary? That could be a good idea for manager's convenience. So this feature, we will talk about it in the future episode. So let's see the feature board here. Now, the first one, generate name and timestamp clock in record we have completed today. And the next five ones, then maybe you can do it first by yourself and then see and let's see uh, how we uh, do these functions in the future episodes. Okay, so last thing, uh, I want to give a brief that Drew code is made for bringing programming tutorials that is simple and uh, useful in our work or daily life. So I hope you enjoy your video. And finally, I would give to a shout. I would like to give a shout out to the a slice go for providing this beautiful slide platform for free. I hope you enjoy the video and see you next time. Bye bye.